Okay, so at this point you should have, or at least will be very close to having, all of your uh, primary furniture modeled. Um, and the next step is going to be to take all that furniture and to put it into your room that you've uh, blocked in. And in this case I also modeled the, uh, the ceiling and the floor, which is just a bunch of hardwood planks as you can see, uh, which was just modeling one plank. Duplicate, duplicating it across the row and then down the room. So you get a lot of mileage out of um, objects if you can use duplicate special with them. Um, so I've got this scene here and this is my room layout scene and then if we look at my uh, folder structure here, I go to my scene folder, I've got a bunch of other scenes. I've got uh, a cabinet with drawers, I've got another cabinet, We've got a couch, a fence, um, a stool, a tall cabinet, uh, we will ignore the tree, and a work table. So what I want to do is bring those into Maya, um, but first there's a couple of things that we want to keep in mind in, uh, in the individual furniture scenes. So I'm going to open up the work table and just take a look at this scene here. Uh, you'll notice some drawing errors, that's just... Uh, a function of the viewport rendering. If you zoom in, you can see that there is no issue there. But we have, um, well, first of all, I didn't name this because I'm terrible. But if we look at the outliner here, um, we've got the work table itself is in one group, and then we've got these wheel groups which are no longer functional. Um, so we've got some cleanup to do in the outliner. Uh, I don't have a camera in the scene. I don't have a floor in the scene. I don't have any lights in the scene. Um, and I don't need them. I don't want them because when I import into Maya, I don't want them to come with. Because if I have a camera and a floor, uh, floor plane in every scene, when I bring that into my master scene, I'm going to get 15 floor planes and 15 cameras, and it's just going to be a mess. So I'm going to uh, make sure I don't have that. Uh, I'm going to select, well you don't have to select everything, you just go to uh, edit, delete all by type, and history. And what that's going to do is it's going to delete the construction history. Um, so sometimes you'll notice this on, uh, let's, I'm going to grab this cube here just as an example. So let's say I have this cube and I, uh, first I extrude it a couple times, and then I'm going to maybe scale it a little bit, and then maybe I select an edge, and then I'm going to go into my modeling toolkit and bevel it. Okay, so I've done a few things to this cube. If I go to my channel box, you can see in the inputs, these are all of the actions that I've taken. Maya is remembering them. Now you can technically go back and make some adjustments here, but if you do that, things can get super weird super quick um, because it's going to take the adjustments that you're trying to make and then it's going to apply all the other things that you've already done to it. So generally speaking it's not a good idea to do this. Uh, let's see, we've got pivot Z, let's see what, if we can make, yeah in this case it's not even going to let me, I can try to change the divisions and then I get this weird geometry, okay, which is obviously not desirable. So. But that is that Maya is remembering all of these actions and is technically making them still editable. So what you want to do before you bring it into your master scene, one, make sure that you're actually done modeling, right? Um, but also, you select that object or select all the objects, um, or you can just go to delete all, by type, history. Uh, and there's other, way, other things that you can delete if you want to be more specific, but we're just going to go with history. You see all those inputs disappear. All right, and that cleans up that. Um, again, that's just edit, whoops, edit, delete all by type and history. So that's gone. You can see that none of these have any uh, input history there. I'm gonna delete the cube. And then I've got these empty groups, which I don't need anymore, so I'm gonna delete those. And I select my work table, and everything is there because I've grouped everything into that one kind of master group. So here's all the components to it, uh, mostly but not entirely named. 
uh, but you can see all the individual pieces and then the overall group. So once you have all of that, then you can save the scene and you're done. So go through and make sure that all of your various pieces of furniture, all those individual scenes are nice and clean that way. And then you can go back to your, uh, oops, recent files, there it is. Then you can go back to your master room scene. Uh, at this point, it could be a good idea to uh, save a new version of your uh, room. So we'll call this, um, well, I've already got a room 02, so we'll say room 03 furniture. Okay, and click save. Okay, so now, uh, oh, I didn't save my other version. Let's pretend that's not in here. <clears throat> now I've got my room now I'm ready to bring furniture in. So I will start with the work table. You go to File, Import, and you'll see all of the different scenes that you have in your project. So I'm gonna choose my work table. Um, you can uh, preserve references if you want. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, namespaces will add append to the file name uh, or append to the object name the file name that it came from. So if you need to keep things uh, straight, I'm not going to worry about that either. And I'm going to click import. And there it is. So now that it's in the scene, um, I can still select individual components individual objects, but I can also hit the up arrow and select the whole group. At this point, now I just have to place it. So I'm going to hit W uh, to bring up my move tool uh, manipulator. And to make it nice and easy, I'm going to uh, bring the pivot point down to the base or the bottom of the work table. Oops. So I'm going to hold down the D key, hold down the V key to um, turn on uh, vertex snapping and drag it down and hover over one of the bottom vertices on the wheel. Okay, so now that pivot point is down at the bottom of the work table, and I can verify that in the side view if I wanted to. Again, hold down D key to bring up your uh, pivot point manipulator. Hold down the V key to turn on vertex point snapping temporarily, and then move it vertically and hover over one of the bottom vertices. So now that that's there, I can uh, just hold down the V key to turn on vertex snapping and move the whole object up to the top of the floor. Okay. And now it is on the floor. Now I just need to position it in the room where I want it to be. So let's say here. And obviously, all these things are adjustable. You don't have to commit to the final location of things um, right now. But. Um, so the next thing I'm going to bring in, file import. Uh, let's bring in. Uh, let's bring in the couch because that's easy. Click import. There it is. There's a couch. I'm going to delete my human average man placeholder. So I can select that all, and again, because I have thickness on the wood floor, that's why these things are not coming in exactly on the ground plane. Uh, so I'm going to do the uh, exact same thing. Hold down D and V and snap it to the feet. I'll check this inside view, make sure I'm... There we go. And then you can let go of the D key and just hold down V and snap it to the top of the floor. And then it's just positioning. So it'll be roughly there for now. Uh, the cabinets work the same way. Uh, I'm not going to bring all of these in individually while you watch me. I do want to show the, um, the fence that I did, just because there's a little bit extra there. And that is uh, import and fence. There it is. So my thinking with this fence is because I've got this wall of windows, I should have something outside the windows to look at. Otherwise, what's the point of having windows, right? Uh, so here is a fence section that I made. 
It consists of two pieces. There is a vertical uh, piece, and then there is there are some horizontal boards. And so I'm going to first bring that out and position it in my scene. Now I'm not going to worry about connecting this to the room because from the angle that I'm going to be rendering at, you're not going to notice it. So I'm just going to leave it right here. And I model this in a way, let me actually, I'll select it and isolate it so you can take a look at this. Uh, I model this in a way that I can duplicate it down the line very easily um, without having to worry about how they connect. So the vertical uh, post has these channels on both sides that the boards slide into. Okay, and then there's just a little simple cap. And this is modeled off a, a wood fence that I found at like on Lowe's.com. Um, I just did a search for wood fence and wouldn't you know it, it's the very first image that pops up. Not that I'm lazy, it's just a good looking fence and it's popular. Um, but this is the fence and I like it, so that's what I made. And, uh, whoops. So once you have that in place, uh, to actually place the fence, okay, I'm going to select the group, Command D to duplicate it, slide it down, I'm going to zoom in here so that I can make sure that I'm... It doesn't have to be flush up against the, the board, but just in there enough so that you can't see the end, or you can't see a gap. So once I have that placed, I can use Duplicate with Transform to very quickly make six or seven more copies. Uh, so you can go to Edit, Duplicate with Transform, and that's going to copy the object, or duplicate the object, or the group. Um, and apply the same transform that I just applied. So that motion, it remembers that and it will apply it. So you can either use the menu item, you can see it, it duplicates it with that offset, or Shift D is the shortcut, which makes it very, very quick to get a nice long fence. Now I also didn't model any corner pieces, so the fence isn't going to turn a corner. Um, or if it does, you just it won't be a clean connection because you're never going to see it. But there is the fence in place. So uh, once you get all of your furniture modeled, you can bring it all into the scene. I will save this scene and open up the one that has everything in it. And you can get a scene that looks a little bit closer to this. Okay, so I've got the cabinets I did. I'm Oops, there we go. So I modeled two different versions of the cabinet. Or specifically, I modeled this cabinet, then I deleted one of the doors and turned the door into a, a drawer. Um, and so I had two versions of the cabinet, and I brought each of them in three times. So if I turn on uh, wireframe on shaded, you can see a little bit better the scene. And so I just laid them out, duplicated them, and then I put a uh, solid countertop over all of them. Right, and then this cabinet, again, trying to save myself some work and not start from scratch on everything, was this base cabinet. I just made it a little bit taller and fancied up the doors a little bit. Uh, and then I added uh, what will be a rug and some standing mats and then some stools. Okay, nothing terribly complicated. All the, all, even all the geometry is fairly simple. Um, yeah, and that's how we kind of, you can fill out a room rather quickly that way.